Good evening, brothers, sisters, saints and friends. Hope all is well. Hope everyone is doing well. And I pray protection and wellness over everyone. Um, welcome to the flow. Evening of the spoken word. And uh, got a pretty good topic to talk, talk about tonight. I'll go, go over just one scripture. And basically, that's uh, Psalms 91, Psalm 91. And um, it, it, it really ministers to the heart of people, especially in times like these. And it's really needed. So I'm just going to um, really going to uh, break that down and talk about it. And, um, you know, and ho hopefully it, it really it really uh, touches your heart and it helps to, you know, ease and, and bring bring peace of mind to you. Uh, but um. So much is going on right now. You know, you hear, you hear so many new things that that, uh, that are taking place. And, you know, just heard that, uh, you know, a friend of mine on Facebook who lives in New York, you know, you know, we're mutually um, uh, fans of, of commission. Um, he said his daughter died. And then three other people that he's close, he's close to died. And trying to figure out if his daughter died from the corona, but people are, he's in New York. People are dying um, from the coronavirus in New York terribly. Hey, Teresa. Uh, so we really need to pray oh, for people all over the U.S., all over the world. It's just like, it's crazy, man. And uh, a principal in um, a, a New York, um, where is that? I think I still have it. Principal in a, a, a Brooklyn principal. She died. She's 36 years old. Brooklyn, New York. So it's really rough in New York. And then you have people that are leaving New York. Uh, I just read that. Um, well, I heard of that recently and uh, and kind of read some things on that, that people are leaving New York and coming to Florida to try to leave what could possibly happen um, po politically due to the high cases High number of cases of uh, Corona, and um, in New York, but you know, again, there's like a 12 day window with this thing, and people are coming to Florida, flying into Tampa, coming into Florida is just crazy. So people all over the world, the U.S., your own state, wherever you are, you know, we're gonna pray, but. <clears throat> One thing to do is just to be mindful. You know, if if, if, if the government says self-quarantine, self-quarantine. You know, don't go out and just be all willy-nilly just to be out, you know. Because I, I can I can really see them trying to put a um a curfew on a lot of cities, you know, you know, things are coming down the pipeline. So, you know, we we need to be safe. We really don't know the full details, except for what we hear on the news and on Facebook and, you know, things of that nature. Then you have the president saying one thing about Easter, you know, we, we're just going to lift the lift the quarantine in, in Easter. And then you have the the um, Surgeon General, you know, saying, you know, the, you, you know, talking about how serious this thing is. So we just need to play it safe, man, and, 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 and just... You know, self-quarantine, stay in the house unless you really have to go out and go shopping or what have you, you know, because we want this thing to die down. Do we don't want it to get worse, but people are dying. You know, I got, again, friends have people in New York that are dying. So we, we really need to, to stay safe during this time. Hey, Desiree. So, I mean, you know, we're going to talk about Psalm 91. I'm going to break that down tonight. And um, we're going to go into a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. And a lot of us take it for granted, but we thank you for life. Thank you for health. And thank you for strength. For allowing us to see another day. Allowing us to live another day. Allowing us to be able to partake in your worship in your praise another day. Thank you, Lord. 
giving us the activity of, of our limbs, Lord God, being able to breathe. We bless your name, Lord God, because you are sovereign. You are a king, king of kings, Lord of lords. Lord, during, in times like these, we need you. In times like these, Lord God, we need an answer from you. In times like these, Lord, we need your protection. In times like these, Lord God, we need your direction. Lord, we need you in all things, Lord God. And we thank you. We bless you. For those that are able to get on, on live and, and hear, Lord God, continue to move and bless them and keep them and touch them and heal them, Lord God, protect them, protect their families, their loved ones, all those that are around them, Lord God. We thank you and we bless you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for even being able to partake in your word, Lord, through through social media and, 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 and through the internet. Because we don't know how long we can have the internet. But we still bless your name for it, Lord God, for all things, Lord. In the midst of all of this, we still thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In the midst of heartache, in the midst of pain, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of death, we still thank you. Lord, even now, we don't doubt you. Even now, we ask you, Lord God, to help us to increase our faith. Because there are people that, because of this, they're, they're, they're losing their belief. My Lord, thank you, Jesus. But we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see through what the enemy is trying to do. Allowing us to see through, you know, the 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 the, uh, the, the lies that the enemy is trying to put before our eyes. Allowing us to, to, to have discernment of what's really going on. Then the enemy comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And we thank you, Lord God, to know, Lord God, that we will not allow the destroyer to take us down, to take us out. We will continue to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in you, Christ Jesus, Lord God. Protect those, Lord God. Heal those that are in New York. Heal those that are that are in neighboring um, counties and states and, and, and all throughout the U.S., Lord God, North Carolina, Florida, Lord, California, Lord, wherever, any place in, North, in, in, in the United States, Lord, touch. Keep your arms of protection there, Lord God, to stop this thing, to slow this thing down. Because there, there is an ulterior motive. The, the, the enemy is going to utilize this to press on the oppression of the saints of God. And we won't allow it. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, that we are still seeking your kingdom. For these blessings we ask, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Tonight, it's going to a mode of worship. <clears throat> Martin, um, we're gonna sing uh, "You Are Alpha and You Are uh, Omega" by um, by Israel Halton. So, God bless you, Jared Celeste. Thanks for coming on, Mary. God bless you, Toya. I'm going to sing um, uh, your Alpha, your Omega. Okay. Yes, you do. Okay. I'm going to sing it starting low. We are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy 
to be praised. I think it started, it started high. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I'm going to go to a lower key. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Hold down. We give you all the glory. We worship you. <coughs> you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. You are Alpha. Yeah. And Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you Worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. One more time. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. God bless you. We truly give him all the glory and we worship him because he is Alpha. He is Omega. Hallelujah. The beginning and the end. Tonight, we're going to talk about, um, can you give me some water, please? Sure. Talk about Psalms 91. All right. And um, again, you know, be encouraged. Stand strong. You know, continue to fight. That's what we're here for. Don't give up the fight. All right? Because, you know, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of the strongholds, so many strongholds that are out there right now. And right now, with that fight, we're going to pull those strongholds down. All right? So tonight, um, turn the book to, to Psalms 91. Okay? I'm going to read it through, and I'm going to break it down. Okay? Psalm 91, those, and I'm, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, because a lot of people say, oh my God, the, the King James Version is just so, you know, thus is and thou's and everything. Psalms 91 really breaks that breaks it down and, 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 and very in line, you know, with, 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 you know, truly with the Word of God. So, you know, you'll be able to understand this. Um, those who live in the shelter of the Most High, will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. 
He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the, the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, mm, though 10,000 are dying around you, your right hand, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever God, you go. Thank you, Jesus. They will hold you up with their hands. So you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those, those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be there. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Friends, family, saints, you know, let's just break that, break this thing down. You know, as we understand that the, the author, you know, uses a lot of figurative language in this writing. So we really have to get an understanding what it's talking about, especially during this day and time where life that we know is not what we remember. <laughs> it's in the distant past. Life is so different. So let's break it down. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. You know, that, that's, that's the, uh, the, um, the King James Version. Uh, Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. So, for one, you know, God has a secret place, all right, you know, for his own, and that's for us, for those who know him, all right, Psalms 27 and 5 and 31 and 20, look into that, you know, um, uh, uh, read that, it talks about a secret place, and it is a place to live in, when we know him, we live in him, and those who dwell there, they abide under the shadow of the Almighty, knowing his protection, his comfort, and his care. So you know, we have to understand that God in his entirety loves us to the point that he wants no demise coming to us. So he's always going to be a protector. All right? Abiding under the shadow of the Almighty means that He's there to protect us, being in his secret place, being in his bosom, being, being able to know him and being in him. So Psalms 90 and 1, Moses spoke of God as the dwelling place of his people. And the opening lines of Psalms 91 seems to take that idea further. Moses spoke of God as the dwelling place, the habitation, the home of man. So this psalmist or singer seems to accept that great idea. And then to speak of the most central chamber of the dwelling place, which is in God, refer, referring to it as the secret place and describing its complete security. So there are many followers of Jesus Christ who seem to know very little of the secret place of the most high. All right. And, 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 I, and I want people to know that, you know, some people are trying to figure out who, the, who the, the writer was of this book. You know, a lot of people attribute it to whenever there is a psalm without an author or a writer, they usually attribute it to the last author from the last book that was associated with the writer. This one, in this case, would have been Moses. Some people also say that it could have been David, because a lot of these things that are mentioned in this psalm sound, sound, sound so much alike, you know, like a lot of his other psalms. So whomever it was, 
was in a it was in a, in a very deep state to, to get an understanding to know God and His presence, to really know Elohim for His entirety, and experience His love in His fullest capacity for them to write this 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 song. So. People want to, you know, they don't know too much about the secret place of the Most High or what it is to abide under his shadow. A lot of people seem to regard this as only a thing for mystics or, or super spiritual people. So if David wrote this, you know, he was a warrior and a man well acquainted with the realities of life. And it's true that the, that the life of the spirit seems to come more easily for some than for others. But there's an aspect of the secret place of the Most High that is for everyone who puts his trust or her trust in him. So every child that looks toward the inner sanctuary and the mercy seat, the mercy seat is the very dwelling place of God. Yet all do not dwell in the most holy place. They run to it at times and enjoy occasional approaches, but they don't habitually reside in the mysterious presence. Let, let, let's take, for instance, the, 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 the tabernacle, you know, or, or, or the temple of God, where, you know, you have the, um, the outer court, and you have the, the, uh, the, 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 the pool of lava where people wash, and then you have the inner court, and then you have the table of showbread, and then you have the, the great menorah, and then you have the, 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 the most holy place, the holies of holies, where the Ark of, of the covenant, covenant dwelt. Now, mind you, the only way to get to the most holy place, the holies of holies, was if you were a high priest. And around that ankle, they would tie these... Fruit kind of like dried pomegranates. And when they moved, sounded like bells. So you had to be, you, 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 I can't say perfect, but you had to be holy. And, you know, you had to be sanctified from the outside forces in order to get to the holy place of God. Because if you weren't, and you walked into the holies of holies and, and you weren't cleansed, you dropped dead. And the way that people would know, the, the, the priests would know when they were in the inner court, they wouldn't hear, hear the bells anymore moving around while the high priest was in the holies of holies. Christ came down. He ripped the veil where we had access. You know, the secret place of the most high. We have access to the secret place of the Most High. We're now, because of grace, you better thank God for grace. Because of grace, you're allowed, you're allowed to dwell before the secret place of the Most High. And, and, and if your heart is pure, and purity comes from understanding God and, 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 and having a relationship with God and being relational with God and having a repenting heart, knowing that you may have issues like, like Lord, forgive me every day. You repent, you're repentant and, 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 and knowing that the Lord, I know I've got issues, but I need you to help me. You, God still gives grace for you to be within his secret place, within the midst of his holies, of holies, of, 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 his, of his very dwelling place. You know, and this is so powerful. So it's for everybody who puts their trust in them. David was a man of so many flaws. But David trusted him. He loved him. David made so many mistakes. But God even said he was a man after his own heart because David understood God and David understood repentance. David even understood grace. Even before the dispensation of grace when Christ came to this earth. So let's talk about the shadow of the Almighty. So now we understand that the secret place of God is, uh, uh, kind of relates to the, the holies of holies, you know, from, from, the, from the temple that was built. 
when they when Moses was in the desert. So you could kind of see that Moses may have written this thing. All right. And so the shadow of the almighty, this is an expression which implies great awareness, a great nearness of knowing that Christ is right there with you. So we need to walk very close to the companionship of God. If we would have his shadow fall on us, so we need his presence to be with us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your stab, you comfort me. That's the shadow of the Almighty. That's when you could think that maybe David wrote this. So let's kind of break down this shadow. You know, and we'll use utilize scripture with this shadow of the Almighty. You know, and, and, and we need to be in this shadow. That's his covering. That's his protection from the snare of the fowler. He's the shadow of the rock. It's mentioned in Isaiah 32 and 2. He's the shadow of the tree mentioned in Song of Solomon 2 and 3. The shadow of his wings mentioned again. You know, and, and, and this, the shadow of the Almighty, the shadow of his wings all sound so familiar. Psalm 63 and 7, the shadow of his hand, Isaiah 49 and 2. So the first two verses of Psalm 91 use four wonderful titles or names of God. So we, it, 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 it specifically does this so we can understand that we know God and, 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 and know who God is. Most High, Elion, Almighty, El Shaddai, the Lord, which is Yahweh, Y-H-W-W-H, and then my God, Elohim or Elohe. It, it gives it, it, it utilizes the power and lets you know how powerful God is in his existence, that he is, and there's nothing else. There's no no um no no past and no present. He is. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Which were the angels that speak this that the that, that, that Ezekiel saw within that wheel. And so we need to understand who God is in this time. It's not good to know God, to not know God. It's not good to not know God. It's not good to, to, to not have an understanding of what your God's capabilities and what your God ability, God's abilities are in you. To place that ability in you to know how to tap in to his promises and his power. Let's talk about the refuge and his fortress. Because during this time, we need protection like none other before. So as the government is telling us as we need to self-quarantine, right now, physically, our fortress is in our homes. When it comes to God, he is my refuge and my fortress. The one who lives intimately, the one who knows God, the one that God knows Lives intimately with God, knows the greatness of his protection, understands that he can protect. Sometimes we need God to, to drop this, the scales from our eyes to see this battle is spiritual. The spiritual realm is just as physical as the physical realm. But in, on, in order to understand that you really need to know God and seek his face. So when you know that he is your refuge, you'll know that he is your refuge. Without a doubt, you will say, my God is my protection. I don't care what is going on around me. I don't care if, if this person is, 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 is going out of here. I don't care if this person has done that or, or what the government has said and what we need to do is outside of, you know, what, 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 um, what we generally do and, 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 and outside of, uh, you know, our own morality, you know, God is my protection. 
He's my, my re refuge and my fortress. So with that being said, God himself becomes like a mighty refuge and fortress for the believer. Because you have to believe in order for God to work in your life. Because those who waver, it's like a sea, like a ship in the sea tossed to and fro. And they can't receive anything from the Lord because they really don't know. They're all over the place. Their minds are all over the place. They want to believe this, they want to believe that, they want to believe that, they want to believe the other. Whereas if you put your total trust in God, he can totally protect you. My refuge. Have you ever said definitely, oh Lord, you're my refuge? Have you ever said that out of your mouth? So fleeing from all other, have you sheltered in him from the storms, from the, the, the windy storms and the tempest, from the craziness by the day and, and all the pestilence by night? from man and the enemy and the, and the devil, you must avow it. You must take heed to it. You must put, let God put that stamp of approval knowing that, okay, he believes me. She believes me. She believes in me. And she is in me as I am in them. So do not only think it, but say it and do it. As a man thinketh, so is he. That's what the word of God says says, my God, in him will I trust. This close relationship with God and all the benefits that come from it are for those who know Elohim, Yahweh, as God, and who trust, truly trust in him. As a believer receives his protection, comfort, and care, he trusts God all the more and increasingly knows him as God. So you have to really understand. I talked about trust at the beginning of the year. It's all dealing with faith. You know, because when a person doubts, they lose trust. And when things happen within a person's realm, within a person's um, life or, 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 or within their, 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 their domain, and it, it, it's beyond their control, and a lot of loss comes from it, a lot of people lose trust. Whereas when it comes to God, we need to even gain trust even the more. Because God moves in a mighty way through his trust. So, as a believer, like I said, receives his protection, comfort, and care, he trusts God all the more and increasingly knows him as God. So it has to be an increase of trust and, and understanding of who God is. And so men are generally apt to uh, apt enough to proclaim their doubts, unfortunately, you know, and, and even to boast of their doubts. You know, I have a lot of people that are so negative about so many things, you know, especially during this time, people talk about they love the negativity. Please put away the negativity. Is going on right now. If you see the negative things that's going on on social media, just block it or scroll, keep, keep scrolling down until you see something positive. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of you have seen everything that you could see to learn everything about the coronavirus and COVID-19 right now. You know, and, 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 but, but then when you hear more and more things, you know, that, that really aren't newsworthy and then coming from this this source and that source and the other source, then you get confused and you're like, oh my God, I think I'm going to die. Oh, I can't breathe the air. Oh, I can't go outside. I can't touch my wheel. I can't touch my door. I can't sit on my toilet. I can't do this. I can't do that. And you have fear and you're walking in fear. And when you fear, the enemy comes in and takes you out. Trust God. Do not doubt Indeed, there's a party nowadays for the most audacious pretenders to culture and thought who glory in bring forth suspicion on everything. Then it becomes the duty of all true believers to speak out and testify with calm courage to their own well-grounded reliance upon the God. 
in his presence, in his trust. We need to walk in peace and calmly proclaim and declare his power of his protection and his guidance on letting us know where and when and how to move. So let's talk about this, my God, all right? My God in whom I will trust. My God is the young convert's confession in Ruth, as in Ruth 1.16. My God is the individual Christian, uh, Christian's belief, uh, th thinking of Thomas, as in John 2, 2, 20 and, and 28. You know, where he says, my Lord and my God, finally stop doubting. My God is the declaration of the believer when he's oppressed. Um, M M Micaiah, as in 1 Kings uh, 22 and 14. My God is the secret vow of the believer in consecration. Where Jacob said this, as in Genesis 32, 28 through 30. My God is the deepest comfort to God's children in great woe in times like these. Where Jesus said, Jesus mentions this as in uh, Matthew 27 and 46. And my God is a celebration of the victorious believer. Miriam, um, in, in regards to Miriam, as in Exodus 15 and 21. In order to know God, you have to believe. In order to know God, you have to know where your salvation comes from. In order to know God, you have to know God's purpose. His purpose for was for a man to come down, for him to wrap himself up in the fullness of man and walk amongst the people to see why men themselves have a hard time serving God and believing God. So he came as a mere man to bring, to start the kingdom right here on this earth during that time and his own did not receive him. So to know who your God is, is to know Christ. Let's keep on going. So how God, how God brings his protection, comfort, and care. So surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. And he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings, you will take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. What is that? Following the general statement of the first two verses. Now, the singer or the psalmist describes the specific ways God protects and cares for his people, beginning with what rescue from those who would be trapped or those who would trap God's people as the fowler snares birds. So these are metaphors. Like I said, this is a lot of figurative speech in, 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 the, in these writings. They're metaphors for the plots which would entangle our affairs, Psalms 140, 1 through 5, or compromise our loyalty to God, Psalms 119 and 10, 119 um, and 110. We're foolish and weak as poor little birds. Mm. And are very apt to be lured to our destruction by cunning people, cunning enemies, cunning foes. But if we dwell near to God, he will see to it that the most skillful deceiver shall not entrap us. Keep your eyes open. Keep your minds alert. Because what's going on right now is very skillful. The, the, the enemy is, is using skill to try to deceive you. I'm not saying anything specific because honestly, I'm, I, I'm looking for answers from God, for God to direct me and to show me and to lead me. But we know there's a hidden agenda that the enemy is trying to utilize through people to destroy God's people. The devil and his agents work often work as the fowler works. The fowler works in secret. The fowler changes his trap and methods. The fowler often entices with pleasure or profits. And, and, and let me let me see something right quick. Um, 
And the fowler will often use a bad example or decoy. Hmm. What could be that decoy? Pestilence, sickness, disease. Getting us away from congregating together. Bible says with two or three are gathered together in my name. There will I be in the midst. God's power is increased when we are together. But when we are the same mind, the same judgment, even through social media, we can still walk in that power because we're still two or three to get um, uh, uh, together, gather together. As you can see me, I can see you. We are still of one mind, one heart, one accord. The enemy cannot seep through the tightness of the bonds of God's people. The most striking feature of this section and the one following is the use of the singular you throughout, which is a way of saying that these truths are for each person individually. Come on, you got to you got to take this at heart, you know, um, for he'll rescue you, rescue you from the trap. Let's go to um to the New Living Translation. He'll rescue you from every trap to protect you from deadly disease. That's the pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. All right. And, and, and he will shelter you from his wings. All right. And under his wings, you shall take refuge. All right. And his faithful promises are your armor and your protection. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. So, so, you know, with that, understand that this is all for you. But you have to understand God. You have to know God for this to work for you. Because mind you, this spiritual thing is a very real place. The spiritual realm is a very real place. The spiritual realm is much more powerful than this physical realm. I talk about <laughs> the um, the Matrix a lot. Whereas, and, and I love the movie. It's a lot of metaphorical things, you know, symbolisms in that movie. They, they, they can really, you know, um, that are parallel to, to God's kingdom. So, so the realm that Neo actually thought he lived in was not the real realm. That was the physical realm. But when he was in Zion, Zion is God's heavenly place. When he was in Zion, that was the real deal. And when he was in Zion, he saw the enemy. He saw the demons that were trying to destroy. He saw... He saw so much. He saw the spiritual realm. When you are in God and you know God and you ask God to show you you and show you what's around you, you will be able to understand why these things are happening. And he will show you. He'll drop the scales from your eyes. That's why if you ever ask God to show you the real deal, don't get scared when it happens. Because when it happens, you're gonna be like, Lord, I wish you would have never done that, but it's too late. You'll be able to see the see angels, you'll be able to see demons. A brother, a brother right now, um, um, the assistant pastor of my church, he he told a story about how literally he was asleep. And and and, and in this dream, this demon, this big minotaur type demon picked him up and slammed him on his bed. When he was slammed on his bed, he bounced off the bed and hit the floor, woke up on, on the floor, hitting the floor. This thing's so real. My apostle has dealt with demons and cast demons out and seen people with superhuman strength. Apostle John A. Bennett, superhuman strength, throwing tables from a corner, lying on a, a man lying on his back to the other side of the room. This stuff's real. My uncle seeing seeing um uh, uh, angels in the corner uh, uh, of his room, just sitting there. This thing's real. My uncle, when he's younger, seeing demons walk walk up the stairs. <coughs> this thing is real. But you gotta ask God to show you what this real deal is. But you have to know God in order to see God or Him to show you what needs to be seen. So, 
So let's talk about, you know, the pestilence, the perilous pestilence. God also protects his people in times of plague and disease. Here we are dealing with plague. There's so many plagues in, in the dark ages and in, and, and, and so many centuries ago and think, oh, it'll never come our way because, you know, uh, modern technology is, you know, it got us in places where we don't have to be affected like that. And, you know, so many vaccines going on and, you know, we get the vaccines. Most people get the vaccines when they're babies and, you know, they're very well protected and, you know, nothing can come this way. The United States is very well protected. So, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're good. You know, we're, we're covered, you know, and, 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 you know, God is protecting the United States. This is a pandemic. Continent to continent to continent to continent. All seven continents have been affected by the plague and pestilence. The, the, the psalmist inspired by the, by the um, Holy Spirit did not intend this as an absolute promise that every believer would be delivered from every snare and every pestilence. Understand, it rains from the just and the unjust, but do understand, instead, the idea is that the psalmist could point to many times when God did just that for his trusting people. Always trust in God. Always trust in God. Always trust in God, no matter what. He is your protector, no matter what. Even if you feel a cough coming on, no matter what, he is your healer. Even if you see, feel a sneeze coming on, if you feel phlegm in your chest, no matter what, he is your protector. He is your healer. He is your God. He protects you from the perilous pestilence. No matter what. So it doesn't mean that those who trust God never die from infectious diseases or suffer from an enemy's plot, of course, but it means that those who trust God are habitually delivered from such dangers. What Christian cannot testify to many such deliverances. So understand, we've seen what God can do. If you're a child of God, if you lived in this thing long enough, you've seen what God God can do. I've seen God, you know, um, um, uh, people tell testimonies of when they had AIDS and God healed them with AIDS. I've seen people when they told testimonies they had stage four cancer and God healed them from cancer. I've seen where God has delivered them from so many types of diseases where, where they, that are incurable, but God cured them. I've seen what's happened in third world countries where, where God actually healed people of diseases and pestilences in third world countries. I've seen what God can do. I've seen and heard of accounts you know, from, from, from people who's loved ones and family members were on their deathbed and they died and then the, 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 the prayer of the righteous came through and they came up off their deathbed. I know of these accounts that God can do this thing. I'm trying to tell you. There's also spiritual understanding and application of this. The soul has all, all likewise the enemies ready to attack and surprise her at all hours. So you got to understand The enemy is always trying to strategize to destroy you and to attack you. But again, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of the strongholds. God will be your protector. He's encamped angels all around you. Understand again, the spiritual realm is is just as physical as the physical realm. The spiritual realm is all around you. Just like I gave the analogy of of the matrix. What you see around you, the spiritual realm overshadows that. And with the spiritual realm, you can see the demons that are causing certain things that are going on that are against the will of God. But you can see the power that overcomes those demons when the people of God come together and get together and pray that those things be eradicated. Let's go over. And so so, so always believe that God will protect you from the perilous pestilence. No matter, we've seen so many in the past few decades. We lived through them. This has been a pretty big one right here. We're going to live through it. We're going to survive through it. 
but we have to come together and believe and pray. He shall cover you with his feathers. In the metaphor, God is represented as a bird sheltering young chicks under his wings. The mother eagle, she spreads, spreading her wings over her eaglets is basically a good symbol of the union of, the pow of power and gentleness. God's got you. He's covering you. He's got your back. You ever remember, you know, go, going to school, you know, and um, and 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 somebody tried to harm you or said something and threaten you or what have you. And have you ever had instances where mama, mama will come to school, or daddy will come to school, and would take no mess? I'm like, where's the person that did this? <laughs> we did that when our daughter went through some things and somebody threatened our daughter. We went to to DSA and like, okay, look, where's the person that did this? We look. Vice principal, you need to call this child into the office and that pet child's parent to the office. And then we, then when we had that meeting, parent had no idea this child did this, did this or did these things. We didn't play because we protected our child. Hey, BJ, we, we were in school many times. BJ, you know you cut up, <laughs> but we were stay, still there to protect you if there was something that was coming up against you. Because we were your parents. God is always there, and even in the midst of faults, God will still be there for you because he's your God, he's your father, especially when you know that you have issues and you want these issues to, to be fixed, you want to be changed. God's got you. He'll deliver you from the pestilence and, 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 and the uh, the plague and the, per the perilous pestilence. And so, so basically, so with this thing um, being covered under his feathers, he's he's got your protect. He's protecting you, man. He's got your back. He's got your back. But you, but you have to believe it. You truly have to believe it. You cannot waver. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. To be double-minded means I believe God, but I don't know because. This thing might happen too. Double-minded. I might die, but I believe God. I might get sick, but I believe God. Oh, I'm, I'm, I might get infected or infected, but I believe God. I might go broke, but I believe God. Double-minded man unstable in all his ways instead of saying what God can do. Speaking those things about what God can do. Saying that you will not get sick. You will not die, but live. You will not go broke. You, 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 you'll, you'll be able to be sustained during this time of trouble. You know, that you will not lose your place. You will not lose your home. You will not lose your car. You will not lose your family. That God will be there protect, to protect. You have to believe God. You have to believe that you are really under the um, uh, covered under his feathers. And then he says, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You know, this, the, the, this pictures, it, it pictures God's protection to continue with his truth. And it represents, you know, as the smaller, often round shield and the larger, often rectangular shield, the buckler. So he's your shield and buckler. He's got you covered. He will block off the fiery darts of the wicked. Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The enemy cannot beat you or fight you when he's got you armed. When he's got you protected. When he's got you covered. His truth. The shield of faith. That's what it's called. The shield of faith. That right there, that's the shield of truth. When you believe in the truth of God, it will block off any type of weapon that tries to stop you. So during this time of the coronavirus, COVID-19, believe that God, that, that, that his truth shall be your shield and buckler, that he's going to stop anything that tries to come now your dwelling. You have to believe. So, as for God's care, it combines the warm protectiveness of a, a parent bird with the, the hard and yielding strength of armor. Like I mentioned before, somebody comes up against your child, you're going to you're going you're going to make sure that's taken care of. I know you have brothers and sisters that probably went to the schoolyard and took care of that person to try <laughs> to, 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 to try to mess with you. 
There is protection that God has for you. His angels are there to protect you. He's there to protect you. He's your shield and buckler, double armor. As he who relies on the Lord, he bears a shield and wears an all surrounding coat of mail. Basically the whole armor of God. God. So with buckler, the Hebrew word signifies something that is wrapped around a person for his or her protection. Therefore, it can mean buckler or armor or as you know, um, in, in the word of God, a rampart, a rampart or fortress, the full armor of God. Let, let's let's finish breaking this down. You, you, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flies by day, um, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I'm going over because this is real. This is really strong and important. You will not be afraid. Having God as a shelter and refuge it gives strength and courage to the people of God. When God's people are stuck deep in fear, we talked about fear last week and you hear so much in these messages in the past couple of weeks. It is an indication that they fall short of, of proper trust in God as protector and comforter. Do understand that we he's not giving us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And if you have that power, love, and sound mind, you will know that you're not going to be afraid of the terror by night. So of the terror by night or the arrow by day, the psalmist represents all kinds of destruction that could come in all kinds of circumstances. We see those circumstances right now. It can come by night. It can come by day. In darkness or noonday, it could come as a terror or by arrow, as a pestilence or as destruction. Whenever or however it comes, God is able to defend his people. So let's, let's come on, finish this up. Um, a, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. Um, the, the New Living Tra uh, Translation says, um, though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and you see the reward of the wicked. A thousand may follow your side. The psalmist describes how God's protection could conquer any odds or probabilities. God's protection and care could be so specifically focused that it can preserve one in 10,000. God can protect you. So to see the reward of the wicked, whereas the evils will not touch you and see how the wicked are punished. It's in contrast to the protection of his chosen. God has also appointed a reward for the wicked. God's people are encouraged to look at this truth and carefully consider it. What's that reward? Their reaping process. <laughs> Where they are punished. That's the reward of the wicked. Because anybody that does anything that's out against the body of Christ or the people of God, there is a recompense from that. There, 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 you you got to answer to it. So your reward is what your reward is. You're reaping it. You're going to get punished. So let's finish this. Because you made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall trample under your foot. So because you made the Lord your dwelling place, the principles and promises in verse 10 through 16 are directed toward those who trust the Lord, making him their dwelling place. Like I, It's all through this, this, this one song. You know, their source of life and satisfaction. No evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall you. All right. The previous promises, verse five through eight, of security and safety, even in a time of plague, are repeated. Again, this is not regarded as an absolute promise for every believer in every circumstance, because beloved people of God have fallen to evil or died in plague. They have. It rains upon the just as well as the unjust. It is the happy expectation or the joyous expectation of the psalmist and a general expression of God's protection, comfort, and care for his people. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. And, and, and 
basically, it's a testimony to specific fulfillment and his promise to know that if you believe God, God will protect you. He will not allow these things to come near your dwelling. He will give you wisdom and understanding and knowledge to know how to defeat this thing so that it will not come near your dwelling. Do understand that people who do not utilize their mental faculties on how to overcome will be overcome. I'm nice about this thing. I've heard a lot of people just say stupid people get stupid results. But I'm not going to say that. I just quoted somebody else. But you know what I'm talking about. And so, nor shall any play come now your dwelling. Be smart. Understand God. Let God help you to understand. For he shall give his angels charge over you. It describes another way God may send his protection and care unto his people. Through his angels commanding them to keep and bear up his people. The angels are there to protect you. They are there. And for he shall give his angels charge over you. The promise in verses 11 and 12 was quoted and twisted by Satan in his temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. If you remember that, Matthew 5 through 7, Luke 4, 9 through 12, Satan tempted Jesus to create an artificial crisis by throwing himself from a high point at the Temple Mount. And Satan quoted Psalms 91, 11 through 12 as a promise of protection if Jesus were to do this. If you jump off and kill himself off a building, at least, he, at least the angels come and bear him up so he wouldn't dash his foot against a stone. But he will give charge over you as the preacher quoted, said before, quote unquote, stupid people get stupid results if you believe and trust in God and know God and utilize the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that he gave you and search the scriptures and study the word of God, then you will know which path to take. And if you get in a situation where you fall, where you're pushed over the rock or over the cliff, the angels will protect you and bear you up. Now, if you jump off and say, I know God's going to get, go, I know he's got me, I know he's going to protect me. Watch, let me jump off this house and God's going to protect me. Stupid people get stupid results. And eleven verse 11 and 12 were falsely quoted because the devil left out the words to keep you in all your ways. To test God in this way was not Jesus' way. It was not the way of our Savior. God has never promised nor ever given any protection of angels in simple and forbidden ways. So anything you do when dealing with self, God can't protect you. And then when dealing with self or selfish things or sinful things and say, oh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. God's got me anyway. God's grace only goes but so far. Yes, he's very gracious. God is full of grace. And you're forgiven many times, 70 times, 70, <coughs> so many times. But when God sees that you're not sincere, God can't do too much. His hands are tied. So you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The protection of God to his people extends beyond the general deliverance from harm. It also speaks of a general granting of victory to his people, even over opponents as strong as the young lion and the cobra. So even with that, God will strengthen you to overcome. He will empower you to tread over the lion and the cobra and the serpent and the scorpions. That when David, and this almost kind of sounds like David too, because when he was a young boy protecting the sheep, he, he, he killed the lion, he killed the bear. God protected him, he gave them, he, he empowered him to have defeat over these things that, that, that was so much stronger than his ability. God can do this. So, so all the things that you see around you that's, that, that, that's beyond your ability, God can protect you. God can empower you to be, to, to be healed or, or to stay in health. He can empower you to do these things, but you have to believe. Let's take it home. Because he has... Set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. 
So because he set his love on me, these last three verses are set in the first person as God speaks promise and blessings over his people. He speaks specifically over those who set their love upon him. It has been wonderfully noted that the last words of the psalm were not spoken by God's people, but to God's people. He set his love on me. He set his love upon me. This is used elsewhere in the text of setting one's heart on somebody or on some enterprise, a man's commitment to God, it comes only here. It's your commitment, the love that he ha- that you have towards God. So all of these things breaks all the way down to this right here. Because God has set his love on me and, and he set his love upon me because of your love upon him. It says, because he has set his love upon me, because the person has set his love upon me, you have set your love upon God, believing God, trusting God, knowing God, acknowledging God, speaking his word. Therefore, with that, it empowers you to overcome. But you have to love him to the point that there is commitment. You have to have this commitment to God. You can't love God one day and and, and and not love God the next day. You know, you, you can't speak God's word one day and then speak doubt, God, doubt the next day. It needs to be a full commitment, fully committed. To set one's love upon God means to do it by choice. He does not wait for the, the feeding of love to come, but to simply choose to think and act toward God in ways that express and build love. It includes spending time with God listening to God, reading what God has written to us, speaking to God, thinking of God in unoccupied moments, adoring God, speaking of God to others, and giving to God and making glad sacrifices to him and for him. Our present culture, where where we live today, often thinks of love as something that happens to people, not something chosen. The phrase, because He has set his love on me, reminds us that a significant aspect of love is indeed a choice. And this describes a part, uh, in part, the love we should give unto God. Therefore, what I I deliver him, the promises and and the principles stated previously in the psalm are repeated again and again, but this time for the perspective of God himself. God will protect his beloved and set him on high and do it because he has known my name having a real relationship with God. You have to have a relationship with God. People, where else can you turn? It's either you choose yourself, fall into the pit because we are so aired, we are so flawed, we are so jacked up, or choose God who's the perfect God of our salvation to lead and direct us, to empower you, to move forward in power. Therefore, what I deliver him, the promises and principles stated previously, repeated again, like I said, set him on high, having a real relationship. I will set him on high. I will place him out of the reach of all his enemies, place him out of the reach of all his enemies. So we're self-quarantined right now. Right now, what's the best thing to do but to serve God, but to worship God, but to pray? Apostle John A. Bennett, my pastor and, um, and my, my leader in, in, in Durham, North Carolina, he, the past two days, he's had a, a prayer a, a, a prayer service, you know, where we prayed five o'clock in the morning, you call in and then we go into prayer for a whole hour. This is a time to really know God. This is a time to really serve God. This is a time to get to know those around you, get to know your family around you, to, to get to be a, a bigger influence in those that are around you, to, to, to build them up on the, the most holy place to the point where they can see greatness, see positivity, see change, and not be walk, not walk in fear because of what they're seeing around them or what's on the news. Because you're a newsmonger. I will set him on high out of the reach of his enemies. I will honor and enable, and, and I'm sorry, honor and ennoble him because he has known my name, because he has loved, honored, and served me and rendered me that worship, which is my due. He has known me to be the God of infinite mercy and love. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. God promises to answer the prayer of the one who loves him and the one who genuinely knows him. 
Effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. If you know God, you can get a prayer through. If you love God, you can get a prayer through. The blessing of his presence, I will be with him in trouble. The blessing of his protection, I will deliver him. The blessing of his promotion, I will honor him. The blessing of his prosperity with long life, will I satisfy him. The blessing of his preservation, he'll preserve you and show him my salvation. I will be with him. So no man need add solitude to sadness, but may have God sitting with him like Job's friend waiting to comfort, comfort him with true comfort. I will be with him in trouble. Again, God speaks and acts like a tender hearted mother towards a sickly child. When the child is in perfect health, she can leave it in the hands of the nurse. But when it is sick, she will attend to it herself. She will say to the nurse, you may attend while some others attend to some other's business, I will watch over my child myself. Understand this, saints of God. God personally wants to be a part of your life, but he wants you to understand and to know that you want him to be in your life. So what are you going to choose during this time? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week or next month. It can get worse. But do know that God will protect his people. It's time to get to know him. How do we get to know him? That's why Christ came. To know him more. So Christ came in the body of a of a man to be able to understand what infirmities are, sicknesses, being tempted you know, by, 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 by every means. He, he can understand what man is and what man goes through and what, or who man is and how man reacts. He can understand why man decided to choose a man as king instead of choosing him as king. So he came as a man and died and rose. He was 100% man, 100% God. Was his name Jesus. We know his name through his son Jesus. So how do you know him? As much as you know his word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. Um, uh, 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 John, the book of John, the first chapter. And the word was made flesh. How do you know his word? As much as you know Jesus. How do you love his word as much as you love Jesus? How do you adore his word as much as you adore Jesus? You can't make it without Jesus. You have to have him in your life. And through his love, through his power, comes your protection and all that's going on right now. So I admonish you right now, my friends, and family, this time, if you've fallen astray, let's get back in place. If you messed up yesterday, let's get back in place. If you're if you're on the fence, wavering, trying to figure out if this if this is a step you need to take, <clears throat> step in it by faith and get in place. If you don't know him and want to be a part of him. Let's get to know him so you could be in place. So during this time, we all band together. One shall set a thousand to a flight when the enemy tries to fight. Two shall set set 10,000 to a flight. So the more that come together in unity and in power, the more we can defeat the enemy. and defeat this thing. We have to come together. So all those, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when we pray, let's pray together. You know, at five o'clock in the morning, wake up and pray. Whether you pray um, an hour, whether you pray 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, wake up five o'clock in the morning and pray. So we can all do this together. We need to be on one accord in one place Right now, the only place that we can do this is through our hearts, through social media. 
I hope this reaches beyond the United States and reaches the world. Please share. Please share. Please share. Whoever's on this, please share. Please share. Please share. I know it went over. This is so important right now. I usually try to do an hour, but this is so important. Please share. So those who don't know him, pray with me right now so that you can get to know him right now. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the precious name of Jesus. Asking you, Lord God, to help me. Help me to see me so that I can know you. But I believe who you are. I believe in you, Jesus, that you died for me. That you shed your blood for me. That you received nails in your hands, nails in your feet, a crown of thorns in your head, and blood, blood ran from, from your body to, to down to the from the cross to the ground. And then water came from your side. I believe you did this all for me. You shed your blood for me. I believe, Lord God, that you that, that, that you were buried and you rose with all power. I believe this and I confess it. And I will not waver. Lord, I believe that you are my salvation. Come into my life right now. Save me. Change me. Wash me whiter than snow so that I can know what needs to be done and what needs to be known to walk, walk worthy in the vocation where I'm called. Walk worthy in your calling. Walk worthy in your choosing so that I can be an impact on others that don't know who you are. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for saving me. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit, Lord God. I want to have your spirit on the inside. I thank you for your power. Thank you for your Holy Ghost. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Give me understanding of this salvation and this walk to henceforth and forevermore. I'm walking as a changed man, a changed woman. This I do in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to know more about your salvation, <clears throat> read the book of Acts, all the first and second chapter, so you can get an understanding of how this works. And, and if, if you've been filled with the Spirit, Spirit, definitely read the book of Acts. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came and filled all those in the upper room. Filled everyone that was sitting in one place in one accord. And, 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 and understand the book of Acts, second chapter, 38th verse. Go down. We know we're self-quarantined. <clears throat> it's kind of impossible right now for baptism. But whenever that chance comes, Ask to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And walk and continually keep your eyes and ears open for the word of God that's going forth. This is where the word of God is going forth all throughout social media right now. Strong. I'm here every 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 uh Wednesday. I'm sorry, Tuesday at seven o'clock. The, the uh, evening of the spoken word. I'm here to give the word. I preach to myself because I need this as well. So whenever you get a chance to hear the word, hear it and do it. Make steps to move forward. Study to show yourself approved of workmen need to not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Those who are on the fence, if you made this confession, if you've said this prayer, start walking in God with power. Those who've fallen by the wayside, get back in place. Start walking in God 
in power. We all come together now. We all come together. All of you have come together and received Christ and the power of Christ. Let's all get together and let's all pray. Know that the enemy cannot defeat us. <clears throat> so whatever the plans that the enemy has, cancel it because God, whatever, all, all the things that he said in the scripture is for us. Love you guys. Thank you guys. Let's go, all go into a word of prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word, Lord God. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for your knowledge of the word. Thank you for trust and believing your word and believing who you are and getting an understanding of who you are. Believing why you came here to die for me, little old me with my jacked up self and shed your blood for me. I feel unworthy, Lord, but you made me worthy. And I thank you for it, Lord God. I thank you for your salvation. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for, for keeping me, Lord God. I thank you for forgiving me, Lord God. I thank you for your grace. Help us to continue to walk in your grace and your mercy. Continue to walk in your power. Continue to walk, Lord God, knowing that you are shield and our buckler. Lord, that you're covering us under your feathers and under your wings, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for, for just continued um, walking, that, 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 that we, we dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of, of, of your power. Because we know that you are our refuge and our fortress, that we trust you. Lord, we trust you. Lord, we're going to continue to speak it every day that, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. No matter what's going on around me, Lord, I trust you. We need to open and openly confess it. Lord, I trust you. With your trust, everything that I broke down, Lord God, you got us. We thank you, Lord God, for, for keeping us and protecting us, Lord God. Lord, that you will set this thing in order. We bless your name for it, Lord God, and we thank you for continued walking you and not allowing the enemy to get in what you've already done to help change us. And Lord, we're walking in newness. We're a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. We thank you for it. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. I love you, each and every one of you. Thank you for coming on. As you can see my wife was here earlier. My daughter is to, to the baby. My grandchild. Just want to give some shout outs for those who are here. Toya, thanks for coming on. I know I went over, but it was well, it, it is what very well needed. An hour and a half. We needed this. We needed this. We needed this to really know God, to really know what God's ability is and what he's doing for us and what he will do for us. You got to know God. You got to know why. So it, it was needed, y'all. Arthur, Toya, Arthur Webb, Toya, uh, Robertson, thanks for watching. Desiree Cheeseman, uh, who worked with me at HB1. Um, Teresa Higgins, uh, Bhutan, who worked with me at Blue Cross with Shield. Thanks for coming on. Jared, that was my coworker and my buddy from uh, HB1. Mary Smith, thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. Celeste Rachel, thanks for coming on. Uh, um, and uh, Celeste, God bless, bless you as well. And Jerry, he said, man, spreading the word. Love you, man. Love you too, man. Cassandra, San Pollock, thank you very much for coming on. Jimmy Lowry, my cousin. Thank you. God bless you, cuz, for coming on. Savanza um, uh, Rochelle from Church Apostolic Revival. Thank you, Cassandra. San Pollock, Terrence, praise boy Henderson. God bless you, my brother, from uh, from Church Apostolic Revival. My wife was has been on. And... Uh, and let's see, uh, uh, do, 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 uh, do, Pastor Dwayne from Grace Family Church. Thank you, sir, for coming on. Love you, man. He's the pastor over the uh, Ebor campus with Grace Family Church. Doing an amazing job since since um since since um it's been taken over since um the pastor that we have here at our, here at our church is taken over. Lord, my mind is just going crazy. So I, it's not going crazy. I just kind of forgot some things. <laughs> Jewel Simonet, it'll come to me. Um, thank you for coming on, London, London Bullock, my cousin. Thanks for coming on, Lawanda Ellison. Thanks for coming on, my cousin Tisha. Thank you, um, 
Let's see who else. Oh, so many people. Spencer Lee Hicks, my godson. God bless you. But Pastor Dupree, Randy McNair, uh, my brother in Christ, Desiree Cheeseman. So glad I know and trust him in everything and every situation. He has shown uh, shown me. He cares for me. God bless you. My um, sister-in-law, Donna Wiggins, Leonard, um, K- Kalia, my, my niece, Kimberly, Kimberly Howard, um, my sister-in-law, Ariana Wolf, Francini, thanks for coming on. Uh, Jared, yes, we're still here together. Amen. Ariana Wolf, God bless you. He said, amen. Thank you. Miss you, man. Um, hope your family are doing well. Thank you so much. Donna said exactly what, what I say. If you ask God, um, God, God to show you, he will. Uh, Bambi, uh, Bambi Hill, from, from we used to work together. God bless you. Thanks for coming on. Denise Taylor, God bless you. So many people come on, came on. Uh, Jewel, yes, preach. Desiree Cheese, uh, Cheeseman, we overcome by his word, and his word will always speak and prevail. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Dixon, my, my brother in Christ, uh, fellow preacher, Church Apostolic Revival. Yvonne Troutman, thank you for coming on. Um, colleague of mine, uh, Marcy said, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for joining and um and helping us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jerry Batista, um, one of the pastors also with uh with Grace Family Church. Um Marcy said, Pastor Steve and Lady Lady Baron, we love you with uh in Jesus' name. We're praying for you. But yeah, Pastor Rob, <laughs> Pastor Rob, I love you, man. I know I know I know you now. Sometimes you just get caught up. When Pastor Ralph left um the, the uh, church as a pastor over in um Ebor, that's when Pastor Dwayne became the pastor of uh, Ebor. But Pastor Ralph, mighty man of God, who's now the uh, the the the, uh, the campus pastor of um, Van Dyke at Grace Family Church, where we attend. So God bless each and every one of you, all the pastors at Grace. You know, all of the leaders at Grace, all of the pastors and um, our, our apostle um, Church Apostolic Revival, the pastors there, the leaders there. God bless you, and and continue to pray for for the Flow Ministries. In the midst of all this, you know, this is crazy because the vision that I set for the, at the beginning of the year, things were starting, were supposed to start um, coming in, in, into place this month. But guess what? The enemy can't stop anything. God is still going to prevail. And God is still prevailing. And it shall come to pass because God's got us. I love you. I'm excited about things that are about to take place in God's people. Continue to move forward. Love you. You know, continue to 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 bless God and trust God. Open up your mouth and and openly confess that you trust Him every day. God will continue to protect you. It's been a blessing to have all of you guys on, and I thank God for the blessing to be a part partaker in this thing, so I can be a blessing to others. So and hopefully others, you know, have been inspired by this. And been changed by this. And moved forward and been warriors by this. God bless you. Love you too, baby. It's my wife. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Good night.